Hello, and welcome once again to another MoveCraft tutorial. Today, we're going to be talking about remote signs. So, um, first off, I want to stress, all of this is optional. So, if you're new to MoveCraft and you're watching this video, you're going to start thinking, whoa, this is complicated. And yes, this part is complicated, but MoveCraft itself is only as complicated as you want it to be. So, um, if you don't want to use these advanced features, you don't have to. If you're finding yourself overwhelmed by this, you can just go watch some of the basic tutorials, just get a handle on the basic features of MoveCraft, then come back to the more advanced stuff like the remote signs. Okay, so we're going to use the uh, Tiger Shark here to demonstrate some of these signs. Uh, so the Tiger Shark is an older design. Uh, it's before torpedo tubes had doors. Um, so yeah, it's an older design from the early parts of the uh, Airship Pirates series. <clears throat> but uh, I wanted to use it because I thought it would uh, be a good chance to show some of the strengths of remote signs. So okay, let's go to the bridge here. And the first thing I want to show you is this remote sign. So, if you're familiar with Movecraft, you may recognize that helm symbol, except you see there's something different on the top, the remote sign command. Uh, so what this is going to do is when I right-click on this sign, it will not execute the helm command right on the sign. Instead, it's going to execute it as if I had right-clicked on this sign back here that I've hidden under this stairwell. See, there's a, there's a helm sign right there, and that's the regular old boring helm sign, right? Okay, so why would you do that? Well, so the, let's see, if you're familiar with Movecraft, then you know that uh, the helm sign always rotates around the sign itself. In other words, the craft is going to pivot around, if this was a regular old helm sign, it would pivot around this point right here which if you watched the ship turn, you would see that it is turning on its nose, which looks very odd. So, if you as the ship designer want to have control over what point the ship pivots around, you can put the actual helm sign back here, which is in the middle of the ship, by the way, um, and then you'll hide it under the floorboard so that nobody sees it, and then use a remote sign to remotely activate that sign. All right? Okay. So, how does it work? Well, so when, it's, when the engine sees a remote sign, uh, it then looks at the very next command line, or the very next line on the sign, which in this case is slash, space, space, pipe, pipes, space, space, and then the other slash. Okay, so it will search for that exact string on any sign that is on the ship that you are piloting. Oh, and that's that's an important point. The rule is, to keep people from abusing this system, the sign has to be on a active piloted ship, and that ship has to be allowing remote signs. So there's a there's a option in the craft file which says allow remote sign. It defaults to true. So if you don't want to allow these signs, then you will need to go in and disable it in your craft file. So then when you right click the sign, it searches every block on the ship looking for a sign that matches the, the second line of text on the remote sign. Okay, and it is a case insensitive search. What that means is capitalization does not matter. Uh, and oh, and it will search every line of the sign. So uh, if that string appears anywhere on the sign, whether it's the first line, second line, third line, fourth line, doesn't matter if it appears anywhere, then the remote sign will select it for activation. Um, oh, and if there's more than one sign with that text, then you don't necessarily know which one's going to be activated, which could cause problems, particularly for this helm sign. So, uh, all helm signs have that text, right? So if I have another helm sign somewhere on my ship, let's say there's a fighter on my ship and it has its own helm sign, I'm gonna have problems because they both have that text and I don't know which one it's going to select. So it's not perfect, there are some limitations, uh, but it does work very well. So, as I mentioned, uh, you are supposed to be commanding a craft when you right click it. I am not currently commanding a craft, let me just show you what it does. 
It says, hey, remote sign must be part of a piloted craft. So, okay, all right, fine. I right-click the command sign first. Okay, now I'm piloting the craft. Now if I right-click this sign, hey, rotated the craft, and it rotated around the pivot point of the middle of the craft. So that's cool. All right, now, uh, another use for this is better control of your torpedoes. So uh, the remote sign can be any move craft sign, anything, uh, including uh, torpedo launch signs. So let's see, if you, if you know how those work, typically they have to face forward and they have to be next to the torpedo you're going to launch. Well, not anymore. Uh, so this Tiger Shark has a lot of torpedoes on it. It has five tubes and it has large torpedoes too. Uh, so you can't fit all that on the bridge, right? That's why there are, you know, you look around, there's no, tor no torpedoes anywhere. Um, so that's where you use these remote signs to launch the torpedoes from the torpedo room, except you activate it on the bridge. Uh, so once again, uh, we've got the remote sign and uh, the string it's going to look for is fire tube one, and then fire tube two, and fire tube three, and so on. Now if I go down to the torpedo room, which is just right over here, uh, here's all my torpedoes, and hey look, here's those signs, launch torpedo, and I mentioned it doesn't matter what line uh, it finds this text on, it just has to find the text somewhere. So in this case, fire torpedo uh, tube two, Fire tube one, tube three, four, five. Uh, so let me show you how this works. We go up here back to the bridge, and we have a nice convenient target in front of us. So again, you know, I can right click on this sign even though it's on the side, and the torpedo will still fly straight forward. Fire tube one, off it goes. Um, and it's now easier to fire more torpedoes at once. So let's just shoot all these. There they all go. World of hurt coming into that uh, block up ahead. Anyway, um, so this uh, this could also be helpful if you want to make um, uh, a ship that fires multiple torpedoes, perhaps along the broadsides. You want to have some torpedoes along the broadsides. Now that's feasible, whereas previously that really wouldn't work very well. Okay, another use uh, for this new feature is subcraft rotations. Uh, let me uh, seal this back up. Um, so, let's see. So we have the Goliath over here, uh, which I'm going to use in the next episode in uh, of uh, the Airship Pirates series. And previously, you know, we had all these turrets on the Goliath, which are subcrafts of the Goliath. Okay, and you can get into these turrets. And previously, if you wanted to rotate the turrets, you had to climb in and rotate the turret, just like that. Uh, which may not be practical. I mean, if you want to get a bunch of your buddies together and command the Goliath all together, uh, you can do that, but it's, it's not always practical. So now, using these signs, I've now spread these out all over the bridge, and now you can rotate all of these uh, turrets right here from the bridge. You can also fire the turrets from the bridge, you can fire the broadsides, basically every gun on the ship, except for the two rear-facing guns, uh, can be fired right here. And when I say the two rear-facing guns, I mean the little AA guns. Those turrets, the main battery and the two smaller turrets, you can still fire from the bridge. So that's just cool. So now you can get up here and, uh, you know, if I want to threaten that town over there, I can just uh, rotate. Oh, oh, once again, yeah, you have to pilot the craft first. Um, so I'm going to right-click on this. Uh, so this is one kind of funny thing about the Goliath. It's so big. This, this, it's kind of a lag monster, you know. It's a fun ship to play around with, but yeah. It takes a good 20 seconds to actually command it as the uh, engine is going and putting all the blocks together and figuring out where the boundaries of the ship are. So, yeah, it's a little slow. Anyway, uh, so, yeah, so I can, uh, you know, turn the turret. Now it's facing that way. I'm going to turn these smaller turrets, that one and that one. Now it's facing that way. Well, let's see, I'll turn that one just because it's 
we'll have that one face forward. Uh, you see how this works, uh, and then I look at the aft main battery, and right now it's facing aft. Well, we don't want that. We want it facing the town, so, you know, so we uh, left click and it turns it, and so on and so forth. So now you can control every subcraft on the ship uh, using these remote signs. Uh, another use for them, uh, if, you, if you're familiar with the Raider model and some of the other uh, ships, uh, this Goliath, in fact, has these little cargo ramps down here, uh, and you can use them to, to deploy the cargo ramps. You probably can't see that. It's maybe the other side. Okay, yeah, it's just dark down here, but there's these cargo ramps, uh, and they rotate to deploy the cargo ramp, and uh, you can now do that with a remote sign instead of having to right-click on the ramp itself. So that's cool. So the only thing you can't do with a uh, remote sign is activate another remote sign. So uh, uh, that's to prevent loops, and uh, I don't know why you'd want to do that, but uh, if you try it, it won't work, so don't try it. Well, that's about all I have, uh, so, uh, just giving, so just use this uh, to make your ships a little bit more customizable, um, and uh, if you've found this helpful, please subscribe and like the video and all that good stuff, and there'll be uh, more videos for you in the future.